Why, why not until now? And, um, and Howie said this about himself, and he also later on said this about other people who he saw have a similar change happen to them. He simply said, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. How about that? I wasn't ready. And, 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 and he would even pray about who to invite to go on this retreat, because that's what you do. You go on the retreat and you invite others to go with the hope that God may you know, work in their life in a similar way. And he would pray and, and he would wait, and, and he wouldn't ask certain people at a certain time because he didn't feel like they were ready. He wouldn't just go out and ask everyone. You know, he would just pray and, and ask, and if they said they weren't ready, he'd respect that. You're not ready yet, and it's okay. And, and, and the answer to the question, you know, why for Howie it didn't happen until then, I think is found in, in verse 3 so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. That's the answer to the why question. And, and this man who was born blind, you know, why did God wait until then? Well, you can see the story play out. It had a major role in Jesus' ministry and, and in his relationship with the religious authorities. Why not until then? So that the work of God might be displayed in his life. And, and for me, I think that's the approach we need to take, you know, to, to, looking at, to looking at life, to looking at why things are messed up in life and instead of, um, you know, casting blame and, and, and assuming that things will always stay the same, to look at this story and, and, and hear the word of Jesus. Things are the way they are, with full of possibilities for new life to be born so that the work of God might be displayed in each of our lives. And, and, and I want to ask you, um, is God speaking to you through that word today for yourself or maybe for someone you know? Um, Jesus saw the man and he performed the miracle both to help the man but also to show us something and to show his disciples something, something and to show the Pharisees something, that God is real and that God is able to take a life and to change it. He wasn't just talking about healing the, the, the physically blind here, was he? He was talking about healing us from all the blind spots we have in our lives and, and, and working deeply in our lives so that the places that we're blind to our, our own behavior or our relationships or our outlook on the world or our prejudices toward people who are different from us, that, that God could come in and shine light on those dark places, those shadowy places, and, and help us to see things in a new way and work real change through the shining of light in our lives. And I believe that, that that God's working in me. I, I, I thought to myself the other day, you know, I'm entering what I hope is uh, the second half of my adult life, you know? And, and, and who knows how old this man was when he was healed? And, and, and all the, think of all the people that Jesus met and the apostles met when he, cha when he um, planted his word and his healing in them and things started to change. It can happen at any stage of life. It's tougher when you're older, isn't it? It's tougher when you're older to see that change happen. But yeah, it happens. In, in our own family, we have a, a, a close family member who lives uh, on the other coast, and, and this family member had a, a, a behavior that was character that that was strong it was it was dominant it was ingrained in his life for years and years and years and finally and people stuck with him through through hard times and finally finally at around the age of of 60 it changed and the change has stuck and it's just amazing what God can do and and, and we ask well why why not at age 20 or 30 or 40 why not then so that the work of God 
Well, he wasn't, he wasn't ready. <laughs> and also from God's perspective, so that the work of God might be displayed in his life, that, that, a, that a message that even a man as old as this man could change. And, and not that he changed, but that God worked in his life and God shined light and, and even that deeply ingrained behavior could change. And, and, and the response of religious authorities here is to investigate and to prove that it, that it can't happen, you know? Today, unfortunately, so much of establishment religion is anti-supernatural, not really believing that God is alive and, and able, to in, able to intervene in people's lives and see real change happen. To, the, to, the, um, to a lot of the religious establishment, it's all just hocus pocus. It's all, you know, um, the faith, evangelical faith is, is a crutch. It's not real. And that's what the Pharisees were, were, invest, were th that was their stance. Well, who is this guy? Not celebrating that a man blind from birth could now see, but who is this guy? You know, how did it happen? You know, tell us the details. Oh, he did it on a Sabbath. It can't be real. Oh, he must be from the devil. It, it, it can't be true. Um, and then even his parents are, yeah, that's our son. Yeah, he was blind from birth. How it happened, I don't know. They were afraid, and rightly so, that the, that the, religious, the religious authorities, can you imagine being afraid of your pastors, you know, and of your denomination? Well, they were afraid of the religious authorities that they would kick them out if they affirmed Jesus as Savior and Lord. Well, I don't know what you got out of this, but for me, um, Jesus being the light is, is just an amazing revelation to me that, that is new today. It's new as I look at this. It was new as we studied this scripture on Monday night, and it's even fresh as I, as I tell you about it today. In the, in the radiant service, I'll be focusing more on John 8, uh, 12, and, and we'll be talking about the whole scene of, of how uh, Jesus stood up and, and said, I am the light of the world. Uh, but for now, just remember that the past is the past, and as our sign says out front, forgive the past, you know, when did you last connect with God? You're not far, you truly are radiant. A, a radiant person is one who reflects the light of Jesus back to God and to the world. And, and it's tough to reflect from those areas that you know, we just don't give over to God to reflect from. And so I'd encourage you today if, if there is any you know, if you sense any part of, any area of your life that you're spiritually blind to, or uh, any area that you've been holding back from God, to reflect light back to God and to others, and to believe uh, that God can really change, even, uh, you know, he didn't just change, Jesus didn't just heal a person who had an accident happen to them and was temporarily blind. Jesus healed a man, and the point is made here, who was blind from birth toughest kind of healing you can undertake. And if he can do that, how dare we limit him as to what he can do in our lives and in this world? Let's pray together.